Okay, hi everybody, it's the Higher Physics Paper 2018 Part 2, the Multiple Choice Questions. We looked at questions 1 to 12 last time, so in Part 2 we're going to have a look at questions 13 to 20. They'll mostly be on the second half of Unit 2 and the Unit 3 electricity stuff. So remember your data sheet contains all the numbers that you might require for some of the calculations in the paper and refractive index and spectral lines might be quite useful to you this time. So question 13 we're going to start at. Question 12 was irradiance, that was where we left it. And question 13 is on interference of light waves. So waves from two coherent sources S1 and S2 produce an interference pattern and maxima are detected at the following positions. Remember you've always got a central maximum and then count out the way to the point that we're interested in. So one, two, three, four, we're at the fifth maximum. The fifth central maximum, the fifth maximum out from the middle. So that means the path difference to that fifth maximum is going to be five wavelengths. Five complete wavelengths is going to be equal to 154 millimeters. We're told what the path difference is. So 154 divided by five is 30.8 millimetres. That's answer D. That's question 13. Question 14 is a ray of light passing from air into glass. We don't know any angles, but it's bending towards the normal. We're told the wavelength of light in air is 6.3 times 10 to the minus 7, and the refractive index is 1.5. We're asked what's the frequency of the light in the glass. Well, frequency doesn't change, so we can work out the frequency using the speed of light in air and the wavelength of light in air. So 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 6.3 times 10 to the minus 7, that's 630 nanometers, uh, gives us an answer if you do that on your calculator of 4.76 times 10 to the 14 hertz. That corresponds to answer D. Moving on then, question 15, and we're on to electricity. Circuit setup is shown. The batteries get negligible internal resistance. It's a triple statement question. We have to decide which of the statements is or are correct. First one, when the switch is open, the voltmeter reads 6 volts. Well, with the switch open, we've got two 10 ohm resistors in series. So those two 10 ohm resistors will share the 12 volts equally. So yes, the voltmeter will read 6 volts, 6 volts each. Uh, statement 2, with the switch open, the ammeter will read 0 0.6 amps. Well, to work out the current, we're going to have to use ohms law using the fact that with the switch open we've got a total resistance of 20 ohms and a 12 volt supply so the current i equals v over r 12 over 20 is 0 0.6 amps so with the switch open the current will be yes 0 0.6 amps that's true as well now statement three when the switch is closed the reading on ammeter 1, that's the ammeter at the top of the diagram, will be 0.8. Well, when the switch is closed, we now have two 10 ohm resistors in parallel. The total of them will be 5 ohms. Remember, if the two resistors are the same in parallel, the total is half of one of them. So the total resistance of the parallel resistors is 5 ohms. If we add that to the series 10 ohm resistor, then the total resistance of the circuit is 15. If we then work out the current, I equals V over R, 12 volts over a total of 15 ohms, gives us 0 0.8 amps. So yes, ammeter 1, and it's ammeter 1 that we're looking for, it will be 0 0.8 amps. So that statement's true as well. But this question's kind of tricky because you've got two ammeters. So ammeter 1 will read 0 0.8 amps, yes. But ammeter 2, if you get caught out here, because the current splits, ammeter 2 will read 0.4 amps. Very tricky. But all three of those statements are true. So 1, 2 and 3, that's E. Question 16. This is a National 5 question. 
They like putting this in the higher paper. It's power, resistance and current. We have to work out the current in the resistor. If it's got a power of 4.8 watts. Let's make a wee list. Resistance, 120 ohms. The power, 4.8 watts. And we have to calculate the current. Remember, all your power equations are still on your relationship sheet. We want one that's got P, I and R in it. It's P equals I squared R. Rearrange it for I squared. So I squared equals P over R. P is 4.8 watts. R is 120 ohms. And if you do that on your calculator, you're going to get an answer for I squared of 0 0.040. Now, that's one of the answers, but that's not the answer, because that's I squared. We want the current, we're going to have to square root that. It's I we want, so square root of 0 0.04 is 0 0.2 amps. It's answer C. Question 17. A 24 microfarad capacitor is charged until the Voltage across it is 125 volts. How much charge is stored on the capacitor? This comes up every single year. Same question, different numbers. Why? Because people mix up C and Q. There's the relationship. C equals Q over V. Q is charge. It's Q we're looking for. C is capacitance. And in this case, it's a 24 times 10 to the minus 6 farad capacitor charged to 125 volts so the charge stored will be 3 times 10 to the minus 3 coulombs so just watch the capital C is used for the abbreviation for the unit the coulomb and a capital C is also used as the symbol for the quantity capacitance watch out for that make sure you know the difference so the answer for that one, 3 times 10 to the minus 3 coulombs, that's answer uh, D. Moving on to question 18. It's still capacitors here. When a capacitor is fully charged, the energy stored is, well, there's three energy stored on a capacitor equations. There's a half QV, there is a half CV squared, and there is a half Q squared over C. Which one will you use? Well, it depends on the numbers in the question. We know what voltage is and capacitance is, so we're going to use a half CV squared. The middle equation there. So that's going to be a half times 220 times 10 to the minus 6 microfarads times 12. Don't forget to square the voltage. And if you do that on your calculator, you're going to get an answer of 0 0.01584 rounds to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 2 joules. That's answer D. Nearly there then, question 19, that's another capacitor question. If you get three capacitor questions in the multiple choice, that probably means there isn't going to be a big capacitor question in the written paper. But let's have a look here, it says... Which pair of graphs shows how the potential difference V across the capacitor varies with time during charging and discharging? So we're looking for the graph of what happens to the voltage as it's charging and then the voltage as it's discharging. You should know the shape of these curves. They're both curves. So it's, going to, it's a curve increasing as it's charging up and it's a curve decreasing as it's discharging or emptying out. So it's answer E. Last question then, question 20. Student carries out an experiment to determine the specific heat capacity of a solid. And there's the relationship for it. It's a National 5 relationship. And we're told what the heat energy supplied is, with its uncertainty, the mass of the solid, and the change in temperature. This looks as if we're going to have to calculate C. But we don't. We only have to look at the percentage uncertainties in each of those measurements. Because the question is asking us a good estimate of the percentage uncertainty in the calculated value of C is, well, 
at higher physics, all you have to do is look at your percentage uncertainties and you pick the biggest one. It's the biggest of the three there. 1%, 2% and 5%. Well, 5% is the biggest. So the uncertainty in our calculated value of C will also be 5%. There you go, that's the 2018 paper part 2. See you in the next one.